And in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, the man. Tomorrow we are starting the fast of Jonah, or the people of Nineveh, as you all know. And um, just I'll share a few thoughts about um, what I believe God is trying to tell us in this day and age. Jonah and, and, and his story is, is, is so important that Jesus himself um, used it as a symbol for his burial and his uh, resurrection. And he said that as Jonah was in the, um, inside the whale for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be um, inside the tomb and then rise on the third day. And also it is a message that symbolizes the whole notion of God's redemption um, to the world. And believe it or not, um, whether believers or non-believers, whether people who follow him or who people who, who don't know anything about him. And when you look at Jonah's response, uh, you will find a typical human behavior that we all have, is that our ego stands in the way of God's will. In the morning, um, before you came, there is the, the Matins Gospel from John chapter 3, verse 17. Just one verse, but it is the whole, um, it is the summary of what God intends to do with his creation. And I am underlining his creation because we tend to exclude everybody else except us, that we are the privileged. But his creation, including the nature, including the people who know him, who don't know him, the people who are not living according to his will, God is trying to send them a message of salvation as well. Verse um, John 3, verse uh, 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through the son, might be saved. Because of our ego, we try to, of course, God did not send his son into the, into the world to judge the world, but the, but the world is just our world. <laughs> But those other people, we're not sure about if even God cares about them or not, or God wants to save them or not. And this is, if you look at Jonah's story and his inner struggles, the reason that he did not obey God in the first place and he went away and, and, and he said that because he knew that God will redeem them, God will you know, save them and this against the way he thinks. It is, the way, it is against the way he was brought up because um, God only loves the Jewish people. God has chosen few people in this world and the rest of the world are just as bad. And number two, it's about his ego because he knew that God will redeem them, God will forgive them, so he thought about himself, if I go and I proclaim God's wrath and God's judgment and then they repent and, then, and God accept them, how would I will, will look? So I would rather just disappear. And if you look, if you really dig deeper into your thinking when you talk about other people, especially these days, you will find it is the, the same dynamics. We may be people of God. We may God's church. We may come here on Sunday to worship. We may be baptized and all of the above. 
but we still we have this kind of divisions in our minds, in our hearts, when we put people into boxes. When we put people into worthy of God and people are not worthy of, of even trying to talk to them about God. We do that. And, and we find this struggle in our daily living when we talk about people, when we hear news about people, or when our, our own family interacts with other families, or when our children, they might think about relationships with people who are not from our church. We have this daily struggle, and somehow we think like Jonah, whether we like it or not. And you might not agree with me, but I know deep inside, if you really search your heart and put yourself against the truth of the Word of God, you will find that we have many issues, that we really don't like other people. We judge people, we condemn people, and we really we are happy with the way we are. We are happy with the way we are settled. Just us. <laughs> Just us. And if you will let any people in, he or she must adhere to a long, long list of our human standards, not godly standards. Because the godly standards are that, are that for God did not send his son to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. This is our challenge these days. And if we are celebrating Jonah's fast in any way or form, if you're fasting, if you're coming to church for late masses, if you're doing anything, you may think about, you know what? I am like Jonah. I'm not any better. It is because of my ego that I am putting boundaries around God's love and mercy for other people because I just don't like them. <laughs> as simple as that. Or they are different from my family standards. Or they are different from the image I have for my son or daughter to in the future. This is really dangerous because we are doing like Jonah, proclaiming a message or attempting to put an, an image, but we really don't believe in it. Or we believe in it when it's comfortable. <laughs> and we don't believe in it or we don't promote it when it's not comfortable to our agenda. When you read this, uh, this book again, I hope these you know, coming th three days, I read it more than once, you will, I hope that you will discover or you will uh, realize how God views his creation. Even God loves the whale. Actually, if you look at it, I'm sure Jonah uh, caused some GI problems <laughs> to the whale, right? <laughs> but because he loves the whale, he... <laughs> I don't know, of course, but God loves his creation. God loves the animals that... The books say that they also fasted because they just lifted up all the food. God cares about the ocean, the storm, the plants the believers and the non-believers, people of Nineveh, especially people of Nineveh. I want you to think, who is from Nineveh that God is sending your way today? And if this person is really the reason of your discomfort because he or she is really testing your faith deep inside. There is a danger that we are not reconciled with the world and with ourselves and with the people. 
I believe Jonah was that, and we are like that. مش متصالحين مع مع الدنيا بالعربي كده. We are not at peace with the world. We think that we are fighting with the world because the world is bad and we are good. And we have been brought up this way. The world is in a box and we are in a different box. But we have never thought about it, how God views the world. God loves the world. And the world is not us. The world is everyone, and especially those who do not know God. This is why he came. This is why he loved them, because they don't know them. They don't know him. And what a better proof that he prayed for their forgiveness on the cross. God forgive them because they don't know what they are doing, right? Or is it a nice verse that we remember on Good Friday? And that's it. Again, think about who are the Ninevites in your life that God is sending your way. And I want you to think why you are not really comfortable around them. I think many uh, reasons you will find if you're honest with yourself. But one of them is that they really push against the way you think about God. You think about yourself. You think about salvation. You think about what a good people and what our bad people are. Pride can stand in the way of God's will. And we may preach many times about God's love, God's acceptance to everybody, but here, when it's comfortable, as just empty words of preaching. But, but when you go outside, it's really hard because we really don't take it in. It's a word for church consumption, right? We say this in church. But when we do it in our, in, in our daily life, when it comes to my family, no way. No way. And we alienate people from us, from God, from the church, from everything, because we have a big ego. I'm sorry if my words today are really challenging you or pushing you, but I have been also challenged by that, and I'm thinking hard about what really God wants from us these days. And I want you to just reflect, sit back a little, take a step back, and, and tell him to teach me. I, I am willing to learn even at this age. It's not easy, by the way. It takes humility. It takes also honesty. And if you're willing to live the rest of your life in this agenda and putting God in a box and putting God, uh, the world and his creation in a different box, okay, but you might find yourself alone. Let's read Jonah very well, but read yourself into that book. Don't read about Jonah. Don't read about the Ninevites, but read yourself and let that word read you. Let, let that word tell you what you are really thinking because this is a perfect example of the human struggle that we have in our relationship with God, our relationship with people and the entire world. It's, it's a great short book in the Bible, and I hope that we will have uh, God's view the way he wants to tell us. If you have any questions, we'll do it after the Mass.